this will pit the Ukrainian men against the Indian men. So now we'll get to see maybe the uh, Indian men can avenge what, that loss by the women just a moment ago. What the Ukrainian women did to their country women. This will be some strong shooting. The Ukraine has some really strong shooters, you know, and uh, India has has definitely brought a really good team here to Utah. We'll see what happens. So we're getting start, we're started, we're getting ready for the start of this bronze medal match in the men's team competition. And there's the Ukrainian team, Dmitro Rachov, Viktor Rubin, who you've mentioned, and Markayan Ivashko will be the shooters tonight for the Ukrainian team. They acknowledge the crowd here, a good crowd here at Lindquist Field here in Ogden. Now we'll take a look at the team from India. It'll be Swaro, Diswash, and Jayenta Talukdar. And Talukdar on the left is a gentleman we'll also see a little bit more of this evening as well. Mm -hmm. Very good shooter, Mr. Talukdar, and he's been shooting for quite a while. He's uh, been a powerhouse on the World Cup circuit in its history, so it's definitely good to see him back out here on the field of play shooting for a medal. And here you see the matches in the quarterfinals, then the semifinals. And we are getting set for the start as the shadows grow across the infield here, what is considered the infield. Basically, they're shooting from just behind where the catcher would be in baseball, trying to hit a target out past second base. And I can guarantee you there is no catcher who can throw a ball down to second base as fast as these arrows will get there. Exactly, and there's no catcher that would be on the receiving end of an <laughs> arrow. Well, he will, but just once. Once. Once is enough. And it looks like Team India will be on the shooting line first to shoot the first arrows. Each team will get one minute on average to shoot three arrows. So about 20 seconds per arrow. About 20 seconds per arrow, but they're going to have to shoot six arrows per end. So they're going to get two minutes overall. That's going to be counting down. First shot's nice and quick, and it's a nine just low for Mr. Spuro. Whose sister we just watched. Now it's Viswash with the second shot for India. A little bit high. And once again, they've moved over to this range from the practice range, so your first few arrows are going to kind of be sighting in arrows. Um, some teams will be a lot quicker than other teams, so we'll see who starts hitting the middle um, faster than the other team. Close, but not quite. A nine for Talukdar. And on the line for Team Ukraine right now is Viktor Rubin, and he was the Olympic champion in 2008 for the individual men's category. And that looks like either a 9 or a 10, but the scorers and spotters have it as a 9 for sure. So that means it wasn't touching the line of the 10 ring. If an arrow just touches the line, even by a micrometer, that arrow is considered in. The archers get the benefit of the doubt. However, there, if there's a little bit of color between the arrow and the line, it's out. And that one is a 9 for sure from Mr. Ratchoff. So if the Ukraine can get a 9 or better, they will take the lead here in this first end. Final shooter is Marky Navashko. And Navashko off the mark a little bit. And it is tied after three arrows, unofficially, but pretty sure. So 26 points apiece as we head for the next three arrows for Team India. And Swuro shooting a nine just left. Quick shot by Viswash. Sometimes your quick shots will hit high, in my experience, and that one seems to be kind of evidence of what I've uh, what I've experienced. So glad to know that I'm not the only one who does it. <laughs> Talukdar, by far the more experienced shooter on this team, closing out the end and with a nine. A nine, giving a total of 52 points for Team India. Team Ukraine just needs to shoot a 27 for the next three arrows in any combination to take the lead. So a bit of an opening right here 
for the Ukrainian men in this bronze medal match. And it can be as simple as three arrows in the gold or in the yellow. A little bit of a long hold, but a 10. It works for Ruben. He's showing off why he's the Olympic champion. A 9 and an 8 will give them the lead, or a 10 and a 7. Now it's Rachov, who we'll see in the men's finals later tonight against Brady Ellison, and he's almost dead center perfect with that one. And all Mr. Ivashko needs to shoot is a 7 to clinch this end. Ivashko taking his time wisely. It's a nine just short of the 10 ring. We can see on the target that uh, um, there are several colors comprising the target. There's five colors. There's yellow, red, blue, black, and white. And each color has been separated into two scoring zones. So the inner yellow is going to be 10 points. Then the outer yellow is nine. Then the inner red is eight. Then the outer red is seven and on and on until you get out to the white rings, which hopefully we'll see no arrows in <laughs> or anything past the inner red. I should say we should we shouldn't see any arrows past that. But the whole face is the whole face can be used for scoring. We can see that there's numbers going down the right hand side of the target just to help the viewers in case they forget. But generally, we'll see most of these arrows just landing inside the yellow rings, which is where all of these archers strive to be and probably are always in practice. I know that I've seen some of the best shooters in the world only have a couple arrows per end outside of the 10 ring. So 55 of a possible 60 points for the Ukrainian men, 52 points for the Indian squad. But we saw in the previous match, the women's match between India and the Ukraine, India had a four point lead after the first end and the Ukrainians came back and won. So again, this a, lot is of, a lot of arrows and a long way to go. Exactly. The game is not over until the last arrow has been shot. And India can still come back and overtake the Ukraine, or the Ukraine can just, you know, take this lead and just extend it further and further over Team India. But time will tell. And, uh, I mean, we have a lot of experienced shooters on the field right now. So we'll see what happens. Two lines will signal the archers to get ready. They have 10 seconds to get ready, but no movement has to be done. They have to stand behind a one meter line. The single whistle means go to the line and shoot. And this is where each archer gets on average 20 seconds per arrow. Mr. Swirl, 10 points. How do you block out the crowd and everything else that's going on around you? That's tough to say. You know, generally, when you get in that thing called the zone mm -hmm. and you get focused and you kind of get a little bit of a tunnel vision going on, a lot of the stuff around you doesn't matter. That's another 10 for Mr. Vishwash from India. So right now, the Indians are in that zone. Exactly. They've probably dialed it in. They've calmed down a little bit and uh, they're ready to go, they're ready to play. You talk about calming down. They look calm, mm -hmm. but the stomachs are churning, I'm sure. <laughs> The biggest thing that's going to happen is archers will start to shake. And that's just a little bit of a muscle problem, but. Three tens. Three tens for Team India. They're shaking it up. <laughs> that's amazing shooting from Team India, and we can hear a lot of the crowd still cheering them on. Although Team Ukraine has to be on the line by now. Victor Rubin. We'll see if Rubin can answer. And eight. Again, remember. The Ukrainians had a three-point lead after the first end. We're now in the second end, and India gaining a little bit of ground. Team Ukraine needs to shoot two tens to keep their lead. It's a nine, and a single ten will tie the Ukraine with India. Ivashko taking his time and comes up with a 10. Ties up the score. It's 82 points apiece. Team India back onto the line. Still pumped from their first three tens on this end. We'll see if India can continue the hot shooting. 
which has gotten them back into this match. And they do. Wow, this is amazing shooting from Team India. Mr. Swirl getting it done. Now it's up to Mr. Vishwash to ride that 10 wave. So four 10s in a row here in the second end of the men's bronze medal match. And a nine breaks the string. Still, it's awesome shooting. If they shoot another nine, that's a 58 point end. Only two points less than perfect, but I mean, Mr. Talakdar has a lot of experience and let's see if he can shoot another 10. Nine. Another nine. nine. 58 points out of a possible 60 for that end, putting them at 110 points. You'll take that just about every time, won't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> That'll break, uh, yeah, that will break the world record mm -hmm. if you do that for every end. The Ukraine needs a 29 to keep the lead, to take the lead. There's a good start right there with the nine. Two now tens. they need two tens. We'll give them the lead, exactly. Sound like I'm in Vegas. <laughs> I need a pair of tens. Rachov with a nine. The best I Ukraine can do right now is tie India, which shows you how close, how closely matched these two teams are. Under 10 seconds. And with seven seconds, Ivashko shoots an eight. That's an eight, putting the Ukraine behind by two points. So India taking the lead by two points. So that's a five-point swing right there in the second end. India was down by three, mm -hmm. now up by two at the midway point of this match. Mm -hmm. But once again, it's only two points. There's still 12 arrows to go in this match, and technically still anybody's game. Team and India must, has to be feeling a little bit more confident after that 58, but Team Ukraine could be getting a little bit ticked off at how, how they are shooting right now, and we can see them kind of all focusing on what they have to do at you don't see a lot of talking amongst the Ukraine um, as much as other teams, um, but you'll see you'll see what happens in in the next few arrows. Team Ukraine might start lighting it up, and you'll see Victor Rubin start shooting a lot of tens because I know he does that on a regular basis. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, how much talking goes on during a match for those people who are new to the sport? I mean, is there much conversation amongst teammates or even between teams? There, between teams is going to be a lot less, obviously, but between teammates, I know on my team personally, sometimes we talk to the archers who's on the line while they're at full draw, telling them how to do the shot and the like, keywords that they want us to say to them. You know, it could be smooth, it could be pull, it could be anything. So it will depend on the team and on what each archer wants. Sometimes there'll be an archer who wants something said to them. Sometimes there'll be an archer who says, don't say anything, don't say my name, don't say you know, pull, don't say anything regarding my shot because that's going to screw me up. Break my concentration. Exactly. So you'll see everybody on the team just be silent. So we can see Team India's a lot more talkative to each other, whereas Team Ukraine has sort of split up and uh, trying to get the job done. Victor Rubin on the line for Team Ukraine. Stepping to the line very purposefully. His team down by two. But that could be made up in a hurry. But not that way. Uh, eights are not going to help the Ukraine in their situation right now. Mr. Rachov on the line now for Ukraine. They need tens to start keeping alive in this match. That is a ten. It's on the line, but it's it's in. So Rachov responds. Rachov will be facing Brady Ellison later on tonight in the men's gold medal match. The individual match. We're going to see Mark Inovashko, the man on the screen right now, going for the bronze medal in the individual. And that's a 10. So after the 8, the Ukraine spots a 10 and a 10 up on the board. And 28 out of 30 possible points to start this end. Mr. Swirl going with a nine. Still good enough to keep the, keep the lead. India needs, well, India can possibly have a three point lead coming out of these next two arrows. That won't help oh, though. That's gonna be tough. Best India can do right now is a one point lead over Ukraine.
to Luckdar. Right on target. And his coach knew that too. After you, after he shot that arrow, you could hear the coach saying, good shot. And that's how well the coaches know their archers. They can tell whether that's a good shot or not. And also it's a confidence booster when the archer hears good shot right after they've done that because their muscle memory is going to be kicking in and saying, what did I do right on that shot? That's a clutch shot. That picks up his teammates. Exactly. Ruben with a nine. It's better than his eight, but still, they've got to start shooting lots of tens if they're going to hop in front of India right now. Rachov with a 10 earlier in this end. That's another 10 right beside his first arrow. Good shooting from Mr. Rachov. And this should help him later on tonight, the fact that he's been able to go out there and take some shots. Exactly. Yeah, it, it gives him kind of like a previously played on the field advantage. He's been there before. Exactly. And there's a nine for Ivashko. So a strong finish to this end for the Ukrainian team. And the gauntlet is thrown down now for Team India. Team India can have as much as a three-point lead with these next three arrows, but that's only going to come with three tens. That's a nine, so the best they can do now is a two-point lead. If they shoot two nines, they're going to be tied up with Ukraine going into the final end. This is Wash with a 10. A little bit of an awkward shot, but still good Effective. enough. Yep. It counts, doesn't it? It does. Arrows are, once an arrow is shot, it is shot. You cannot reshoot any arrows. <laughs> to Luckdar, who had a 10 with his last shot. Needs a 9 to take the lead, and that's a 9 or a 10 on the line. It might be out, but we're going to see a 9 asterisk put on the, on the scoreboard until official verification can be done by the judges downrange. How difficult a call will that be for the judges? Well, once you get up to the arrow, like the, the vantage point that we have right now, it's a little difficult to see, but once you get up to the target and you can inspect it with a magnifying glass from all angles all around the arrow, then a better judgment call can be made. Sometimes the paper is bent in, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes the arrow just kicked out at the last second. So it's, it's really tough to say from here, but once you get down at the target, it's a lot easier to see. And we're probably going to see a judge taking a really, really close look at the, the arrow lying in the gold for Team India. It really drives home the point, Crispin, that this is not a game of inches. This is a game of millimeters, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Definitely, and if we ever come to a tie break in the individual matches, we'll see that each archer has to shoot one arrow closest to the center. So you're going to see that the, the targets are going to get changed so that they're going to be completely new targets, and calipers are going to be taken out just to measure the distance from the exact center of the target out to the, out to the arrow, much like they do in curling. So if there's, there's no doubt about it. Exactly. Leave no doubt if it comes down to that point. And it may yet in this match. One of the great matches that we've had so far tonight. And it looks like the scores are official and on the board. Team Ukraine with definitely 164 points. And Team India with 165. So Team Ukraine, one point trailing behind India, has some ground to make up going into the final end of this bronze medal match. And what a beautiful shot of this field here in Linquist Field in Ogden, Utah, northern Utah, about 45 minutes north of downtown Salt Lake City. Ogden, a town of about 82,000 folks, many of them out here tonight. Now, what we didn't see on the screens right now is Victor Rubin had a little bit of a mishap when he was trying to knock his arrow onto the string. So he stepped off the line and let Dimitro Ratchov take his place. But that has taken up a little bit of time for Team Ukraine. And now we see Victor Rubin stepping back up onto the line. How often does that happen where you have a problem with the knock? It's, it, it can happen a lot, but if the archer is vigilant and checks their arrows every time before they put them back into the quiver, it's, uh, it doesn't happen very much. But it we can see. All right. he exactly. He shot. He, it was in his favor. So it was a good idea for him to step away and make sure that everything was as it should be. Mm, and it was well worth it. Mark and Ivashko. And that's a 10. I mean, Ukraine is coming back strong. Team India's got some work to do now. 
29 for Ukraine, 193 points. Best India can do right now is a two-point lead. By the way, the knock is that notch at the back of the arrow that lines up with the string, correct? Yeah, and what happens here is the arrow clips onto the string with this little plastic piece. It's on the rear most part of the arrow, made out of plastic, and what happens is when you shoot a lot of arrows into one single spot, eventually another arrow is going to hit and knock, and that can break the knock. It can, you know, separate the tines on it just a little bit. That's a nine from Vishwash. Best you, the best India can do right now is tie Ukraine with a ten from Talukdar. And if this knock gets broken, gets separated by a little bit, that will definitely change the arrow flight. The trajectory of the flight, yeah. Exactly. So it, it will leave your bow different than how other arrow, your other arrows will leave it. So that's now a one-point advantage for Team Ukraine going into the final three arrows of this match. Victor Rubin on the line. Ruben, as you mentioned, former Olympic champion in 2008 in Beijing, and shows his Olympic form right there. Mm -hmm. Team Ukraine must be getting pumped now, and they're probably going to be riding that 10 wave again. So 34 seconds remaining on the clock for Mr. Ratchoff, and there's still Mr. Ivashko to shoot after. That's another 10 for the Ukraine, and they're really, really putting, the, putting it down. Put bringing it home strong right now. If Mr. Avashko can shoot a 10 right now, they can clinch this match because that will be impossible for India to catch up. If he shoots anything less than a 9, India still has a chance. Ivashko knows it. He That's scores a 9. A 9. Best India can do right now is tie. So this makes things very interesting. If India's first shot is anything but a 10... It's over. It's over. So India, clearly, with the weight of the world on its shoulders right now, Swirl. That's a nine, nine, and that's the match for Team Ukraine. Unfortunately, India didn't uh, wasn't able to bring this home, and these final two arrows are just going to be for glory. Really having nothing, uh, no impact on this match whatsoever. So the Ukrainian women win the bronze medal. Uh, won the gold medal. The gold medal, excuse me, and now the men's team about to win the bronze medal. Exactly. So going home with lots of medals. <laughs> To look dark to finish it off with the final arrow. It's a nine, and it's not enough. And a four-point victory for the Ukrainian men here in the bronze medal match in Ogden, Utah, in the third stage. And a nice round of applause from the crowd here. Good-sized crowd here at Lindquist Field. As the two teams exchange handshakes, go to their respective sides. And I'm, it's not anything to bat your eyes at for Team India. This was great shooting done, especially just to get up to this level. But Team Ukraine has definitely showed their, their power in archery here with the women going home with the gold and the men going home with the bronze. So it's, it's going to be really good for their archery program back home in the Ukraine. As they pose for pictures, smiles all around. There's your bronze medal winners. Here in the third stage of the Archery World Cup in Ogden, Utah. For India, 218 out of 240 possible points in this match. We'll see Mr. Telukdar later on this evening. Once again, but there's your final score. The Ukrainians winning 222 to 218. And coming from behind to do it 